I'm Lieutenant Colonel Mike Boyles, Provider 6. I'm Command Sergeant Major Bryant, Provider 7. Today we're going to provide a wave top, doctrinally based primer for our How We Fight series focused on sustainment. The way we're going to do that, we're going to talk about operational reach, we're going to talk about sustainment, methods of resupply, techniques, our sustainment nodes, keys to success, and then we'll end with a call to action. All right, so sir, can you elaborate a little bit about what operational reach looks like? Sure, absolutely. So, so doctrine defines operational reach as the distance and duration across which forces can be employed. Sergeant Major, operational reach is one of three pillars uh, for combat power. Those three pillars are prolonged endurance, operational reach, and then freedom of action. All right, next we'll go into the methods of distribution, which are unit, supply point, and throughput. Let me elaborate on those three methods. So unit distribution um, is, is when you deliver directly to a unit. Uh, so, so an example of that would be like our LRP operations. Uh, the FSC configures loads for that unit. They meet up at the LRP, uh, they meet the organization there, and then uh, the unit takes takes uh, the FSC assets to their, to their unit, to their combat trains, and does resupply there. The other, other method, uh, supply, point me uh, supply point distribution, an example of that is, a, is the CTCP. Uh, a lot of times we'll leave an emergency resupply at the CTCP. In that case, the unit can come to the CTCP, they can put the, the supply, the material on their own assets, and then they take it back to their unit on their own. And then lastly, we have three throughput. Throughput distribution is when, say, the BSA or, or the BSB configures loads inside the BSB and then delivers them directly to uh, the supported unit without utilization of the FSC. They skip, they skip a, an organization, hence the name throughput. Absolutely. Now we will go into the techniques of resupply. So our major, there's four techniques of resupply according to doctrine. Those four are log pack, preposition, cache, and then modular system exchange, otherwise known as flat rack exchange. Some of the things that are specific to each of those, a, a log pack is, uh, we're pretty used to, that's a convoy that's going to a location on the ground and then potentially splitting apart or maybe doing supply point distribution from. Uh, Pre-position is like we talked about at the CTCP, uh, where you have emergency supplies pre-positioned there in case you need them, or you have an operation uh, that's gonna require them, so you pre-position supplies forward for a specific operation. Cash, unlike pre-position, is not for a specific operation. It is in case you need them, you hide supplies uh, at different places that, that are operationally significant. And then lastly is the uh, modular system exchange. Uh, that is just a, a, an efficient way to exchange commodities on the battlefield where you drop a flat rack of retrograde and exchange it for a flat rack of material. Now we'll go into the four sustainment nodes, which are known as the company trans, combat trans command post, field trans command post, and the BSA. Well, sorry, Major. So the company trains is a consolidated point for support personnel at the company level. You've got your field maintenance team and your casualty collection point uh, right there. This, the combat trains command post is where your UMCP, your roll, your roll one, your HHC CP, and your S1 and S4 are located. They're tracking the battle. They're doing sustainment planning uh, for the for the main, uh, often augmenting the main during planning efforts, and then they're coordinating evacuation of equipment and casualties. Your FTCP has your distro, your FSC uh, CP there, and then also uh, your your CK. They're configuring log packs, they're coordinating uh, with the SPO, forecasting future requirements, and then they're also coordinating uh, retrograde. And then lastly, your BSA, and that is your BSB uh, in, in full. All, all companies, including your role, your role two, are located in the BSA. So now we'll go into some keys to success. So our Major, some of the things that you and I, as we've been out there on the battlefield have seen, are keys to success for sustainment operations in large scale ground combat operations is communication. Communication between the, between the supported units and the supporting units. So whether that's between the company and their supporting FSC or between the battalion and their supporting uh, BSB, uh, communication is key. One of the things that I see that, that often lacks is, is log status. Um, so we talk about log stats, uh, we talk about uh, how important they are, but often uh, they're, they're lacking in quality. 
one of the things that we need to do to make sure that, that we're able to support the BCT in, in uh, large scale combat operations is that we're not only turning in what we have on hand, just doing a dipstick, hey, this is, this is what we've got, but we're doing an analysis at the battalion level to show that we understand the next supply that's coming in and giving some feedback in our log stat that says that the next resupply is sufficient. When we do that, it'll make communication a lot easier during the log sync, which is a, a daily meeting in the field. Uh, as we talk about uh, we talk about requirements, we talk about friction points. If we've already done that in our log stats and said, "Hey, I saw your next supply is coming. Uh, it's good to go. It's not good to go, or it's it's uh, I, I, it's uh, too much," um, then then it makes that communication a lot easier. Mm -hmm. Sergeant Major, while we were out in the field, we were looking at different, uh, different FTCPs, uh, CTCPs, uh, and, and how they operated. One of the one of the themes that came up was share the load. You want to expand on that? Yes, sir. Absolutely. So what sharing the load means is uh, you have your FSCs, and then you also have your Alpha Company, and, sh and sharing that load between the distribution. So what that means is, uh, at a certain point, you're we're pushing from the FSA up to the CTCP, sharing that load between that time, distance, and space. Absolutely, and a lot of times what we saw is that is that the your distro platoons from your FSC were were um, were going an hour and a half one way, and the maneuver companies were only going like ten minutes. And so when we say share the load, what we're asking you to do is really look at splitting that splitting that distance more equitably. Um, and what that'll do is ensure that we preserve your distribution platoons uh, for the next fight. Because uh, they're doing twice daily log packs as well, and uh, we need to share that load uh, because uh, we've got to do ex we've got to do fighter management with our distro and our FSCs just like we do uh, inside of our maneuver companies. Okay, ready, first teammates. Uh, now that we've talked about really the the uh, the doctrinal ideas behind operational reach and sustainment, I want to talk about how, as an RFCT, that we're able to extend that operational reach and our actions. Uh, as a brigade. So first, uh, I want to talk about some of the principles of sustainment that are going to allow us to do that. One of them is anticipation. Uh, our, our former CG, uh, General Eichberg, used to say there's three keys to success in logistics. It's anticipate, anticipate, and anticipate. Uh, and then the other is economy. Economy is really talking about efficiency. And when we look at some of our critical logistics functions, those functions are what's gonna extend our operational reach. It's how we do supply, how we manage supply on the battlefield, it's how we do maintenance and manage maintenance on the battlefield, and then it's it's medical, how, how we conduct medical operations, health service support, and manage uh, aspects of casualty care and evacuation on the battlefield. So let's now put that into perspective with, uh, with the ideas of anticipation and economy. So for supply, if we don't anticipate through our log stats, through those things, uh, uh, through understanding the operation, then we're not going to be able uh, to do it efficiently. What we're gonna do instead uh, is we are going to be uh, just reacting to contact on a daily basis. So through anticipation, we can be more efficient in, in execution of moving supplies across the battlefield. If we can make it routine, then, uh, Day in and day out, we're doing the routine. We're just supplying uh, fuel, ammo, food, the things that we know that are routine. Then we have more room to handle the exceptional. And that's really what we're, we're kind of after is, is freeing up our leaders to be able to handle, handle the exceptional. The same thing really applies in, in maintenance as well. Maintenance should be a routine action. We got systems of record, we got maintenance managers all the way across the battlefield. Uh, we got maintenance managers at Brigade, uh, in the BSB, in the FTCPs. Uh, we got maintenance managers in the CTCPs, in the, in the, in the battalions. Uh, they're, they're, they're literally everywhere across the battlefield. Uh, what we've got to do is make sure that, that we are applying those same principles. Anticipate. We know that operations are going to consume combat power. We know that. We can anticipate in our, in our SSLs, making sure that our SSL, our stock, uh, our uh, standard, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting the acronym, SSL. Shop, stock, listing. Shop, stock, listing, Thanks. that's why you keep Sergeant Major around. So uh, in our shop, stock, listing, 
that they match what our experience tells us we're going to need uh, when, when the operation demands uh, a lot of combat power and starts consuming combat power, our SSL is there to fill that gap. That is an example of anticipation. Now, how do you, how do you apply economy? Economy is, uh, and how it, how it uh, how in the maintenance sense that it's going to enable operational reach is, uh, is taking those systems, taking the things that we have planned and being able to execute them efficiently across the battlefield. Not uh, 5988 flow, making sure that 5988s, that PMCS is done, 5988s are collected, faults are annotated, parts are on order, and then we're able to move that material from requisition to the point of need across the battlefield. That will extend operational reach. And then lastly, let's talk about medical. Um, we can certainly anticipate that we're gonna have casualties during different phases of the operation. Uh, we have we have tools to be able to do that, but it's, it's how we react to those, right? Where we position assets on the on the battlefield to give us the flexibility to adapt to what we're seeing in front of us, uh, and and then to quickly, efficiently, uh, economically ensure that casualties are recovered at the point of injury, back to the the point of where where care is the, the best level of care um, is available. Uh, in some cases, that may be four, that may just be a casualty collection point in the company area. A senior medic sees them, patches them up, and they're returned to duty. In other cases, they may, they may need to go to the casualty, to the, uh, to the role one, um, and, and get a higher level of care where you have a PA available. And that, that's going to be an evac, and, and that's going to be an evac action. In other cases, uh, they may need a higher level of care, and they're, they're evac to the role two uh, in order to in order to execute uh, the care that they need. But whatever the case may be, we've got to understand those systems, Sergeant Major. Uh, we've got to have rehearsed those systems so we can do so we can execute whether it's maintenance, medical, uh, or or it's supply, so we can execute us, uh, efficiently across the battlefield. If we're able to do that we will be successful and we will absolutely extend our operational reach. All right, Ready First, last thing I have for you is a call to action. What I need you to do is to read the article that's in the, comment, in the comments below. Sustaining Brigade Logistics by Gabe Pryor. Uh, he's our own Iron Four and previously was, was Pioneer Six. Also, review ATP 4-90. Lots, uh, lots of great discussion and, and really more verbiage on the, on the things that we just hit the wave tops on here uh, that will prepare you for a more in-depth discussion uh, during the How We Fight series. Thank you for your attention. Ready first? Always win.